there, I'm Dr. Trevor Cates. Welcome to the Spa Doctor Podcast. On today's show, my guest is Robin Openshaw, also known as the Green Smoothie Girl. I really think you'll like her story and words of wisdom that will inspire you. Robin once weighed over 200 pounds and had more than 20 diagnosed chronic health conditions. At 25 years old, she was having many strokes and migraines, slept 10 hours a day, but was still always tired, took medications to manage her anxiety and depression, and couldn't run a city block. 20 years later, she eats more food, but enjoys it more. She lost 70 pounds and achieved her ideal weight long ago. She's now a competitive athlete, sleeps five to six hours a night, and feels happy and rested every day. She now has no health conditions and takes no medications. How did she do that? Well, I already gave you a bit of a clue when I said the name she's known for, but I want you to hear her full story in the podcast interview and how she's gone on to educate and inspire hundreds of thousands of people. So please enjoy this interview with Robin. Robin, it's so great to have you on my show. Thanks. Glad to be here. Yeah. So I I, I know you have an amazing story. So let's start with your story. Tell us about how you became the green smoothie girl well um when i was when i was 26 years old i had 21 diagnosed diseases and i i was over 200 pounds and i had a giant tumor and i had four autoimmune diseases i had um high blood pressure I was having trans ischemic attacks, TIA, which is the, my right arm would go numb and I couldn't see or speak for hours and would have to take hardcore drugs for that. I had anxiety. I took a class D drug for so many different things. Five years of infertility. Every test there is twice. Couldn't figure out why we couldn't conceive. Then we had uh, miscarriages. And um, finally, after five years of infertility and a year of Clomid and five artificial inseminations. I got pregnant with twins and one of them died, but I, I actually went to full term with my nine pound redheaded baby boy, Cade. And he, um, he was fabulously healthy. And then when he was seven months old, the pediatrician told me it's time to wean him because that's what everybody else was doing. And so I weaned him from breast milk onto formula immediately followed by, uh, cow's milk and I was feeding him chicken nuggets and um, cinnamon raisin bread and many many bottles a day of cow milk ice cream otter pops just the standard American diet I was just feeding him what all the other moms at the park and at church and everywhere else were feeding their kids and my son got very very sick and he was in and out of hospitals and emergency rooms and doctor's offices and they put him on steroids and antibiotics and we would strap a bronco dilator to his face every four hours to deliver those drugs and he was in such a world of hurt from not just the disease just like life-threatening asthma but also from the drug reactions and so we were just in a revolving door of doctor's office I didn't take him out in public I didn't go to church anymore I didn't I didn't dare take him anywhere because if he got a cold he would be in a life-threatening hospitalization situation and um about 20 years before, my grandmother had been diagnosed with a very advanced stage, very deadly metastatic melanoma cancer, and she'd been told that she was going to die within a year, and it was super deadly, but she said no to chemo and radiation, and she embarked on the um, a diet of drinking like 11 green juice glasses a day, and she ate a completely plant-based raw juicing diet and she lived another 25 years cancer free and at the same time that same you know 20 years before my uncle had been diagnosed with a very treatable stage one hodgkin's disease and he did chemo and radiation and he died 18 months later of the of the symptoms of chemo and radiation not of cancer so i had watched those things go on 20 years before so unfortunately i had something to draw on that that i had seen happen in my life and even though i was eating standard american diet i was obese i was very ill and i was raising a very sick baby i um have this has something to do with the way we eat i knew we ate a lot of crap i knew we had a crappy diet 
I just didn't know what to do about it, and I had never been motivated, and slowly my health had gone downhill to the point where here I am in my mid-20s, and I'm deathly ill. Well, I went in the kitchen one day, and I got my blender out, and I put a bunch of stuff in the blender and that I'm not necessarily proud of and don't necessarily want to promote, but I, I put two giant handfuls of spinach in it, and I put a big handful of alfalfa sprouts in it and blended it up, went out on the porch, and I carried my baby out on the porch. It was summertime. I set him down in the grass, and I started drinking this green thing. You know, it's kind of like a, well, I, you know what? Maybe we should eat healthier. It was just that a day where I got on a health kick. I sat down on the porch and my son got up out of the grass. He was 15 months old. He had been diagnosed failure to thrive. He was below the fifth percentile for weight. After having been born at nine pounds, 23 inches, his father is a six foot four offensive lineman. I'm more, I'm, I'm taller than five, eight. You shouldn't be failure to thrive, you know? And so I'm sitting out on the porch with this green drink and he gets up out of the grass and he toddles over and he looks at what I'm drinking and he said, what's that? And I said, it's ice cream. <laughs> so, you know, as a mom, you're, you, you get it, right? And um, that was just this brilliant little stroke of inspiration that I told him that this green drink was ice cream. He said, can I have some? And I said, no, it's mommy's. You see what I'm doing here? <laughs> so, of course, of course, he's like, please? And so I said, well, you can have a little. You have a little, but it's mommy's. And I put it in front of him, and my son drank this entire giant glass of our first ever green smoothie all the way to the bottom, and he was making those slurping sounds with the straw. And it was a, a real breakthrough moment for me where I realized that I could feed my family healthy foods that I could feed them things that they, they wouldn't reject, that would taste good. And very quickly, as I committed to that habit, and I started to make those green drinks better and leave the other garbage out of them, and as I started to put more whole foods into our diet, our, our health changed radically. And I lost 70 pounds without dieting, without counting calories, without worrying about grams of you know carbohydrates, fats, and carbs. And I went on to um, become drug-free. All 21 diseases disappeared. And, and now I'm turning 49 next month, and I'm a competitive athlete. And, you know, uh, nationally rated and play uh, all over. And um, that isn't even the best part of my story. The best part of my story is I had three more babies without intervention, and my son went on to become MVP at the state playoffs as a six-foot-three baseball player. He went to the state playoffs and he hit two grand slams. He um, pitched a 90 mile an hour near shutout and he really got to live his dream as a, as an all American athlete, a six foot three, instead of the outcome that we were headed towards as a failure to thrive baby. Wow. That's an amazing story. Yeah. Wow. And so with all of the doctor appointments and the uh, the visits you had between yourself and your son, did anybody ever talk to you about diet? Uh, no, no, no doctor ever talked to me about diet. In fact, about six months into the journey, I went to the pediatrician for some reason. We, we would never again put him on liquid steroids. He was on five courses of liquid steroids in his first year. And so when he was di diagnosed failure, so I, I didn't know until that 15 month hospital or doctor visit I went to when the, when the pediatrician told me, did you know that five courses of liquid steroids in a year is guaranteed to stunt a child's growth? And I said, well, this is the fifth. You're giving me the fifth. So I handed it back to him and I said, what else do you have? And he said, nothing. And a few months later, the, probably the only other time I ever saw the man I told him, I said, so I've been studying and um, like how dairy milk is mucus forming. And, you know, I've been learning about asthma because the man never explained to me what asthma is. So I had to go find out. All he did is say, here's this drug and that drug and that drug. And, you know, call the emergency room if in the middle of the night his, you know, breathing gets above like 70 per minute. And that's what we were doing. But I went in and I said, so I've been just like reading all this stuff about you know, things I can do for my son that aren't drugs. And it looks to me like asthma is a couple of things, like the contraction of these bronchioles or the smallest airways of the lungs, but it's also the fluid 
mucus filling up those bronchioles and choking him. And so I've been reading that dairy and sugar and other foods are mucus forming. And so what do you think about that? And I thought the man was going to throw his pen at me. I remember him looking so agitated and he said, diet and exercise, diet and exercise. They're great, but they don't cure asthma. Yeah. But they did. So is your, does your son use any asthma medications? No. And each of my children were born with the same inherent weakness. Um, but I didn't wean them onto the same garbage and got them out of it very quickly. None of them were ever on steroids. None of them have ever been on an antibiotic. Once I started to learn the light bulbs went on, I became this sponge and I read and I read, I read hundreds of books and papers and I was making recipes and it was almost a full-time job for the first year of his life turning his health around and then watching pounds melt off of me and I was discovering foods that we liked that were good for us and it just lit me up and then the neighbors started to come over and people started to ask me I'd go out in public and they'd be like what happened to you (laughs) what what are you drinking I want some and um then I just have people over my house and I would teach people just, and I started writing books and I put up a website in 2007 because we went on the ABC Disney show Wife Swap. And (laughs) that's really how Green Smoothie Girl came to be is we went on Wife Swap and the producers told me a lot of people will try and reach you. And so I put this site up, I didn't know anything about the internet, there's nothing for sale there, I just wanted to tell my story and it went very viral. And before long we had two football stadiums full of people uh, that's how I think of 100,000 people reading everything that I had to say about the shift that I made with my family. And then I started traveling around the country and sharing this one simple first step, the green smoothie, because for us, it was such a game changer because it was such a quick, easy way. This is a quick and easy world. We don't want to spend four hours a day in the kitchen making food like women did in the 1940s. I don't. Do you? <laughs> right. No. <laughs> <laughs> right. And so I spoke in 450 cities over six years and I did demos. I would fly into Denver or Atlanta or Jacksonville and we would go to the store and get green smoothie ingredients and we'd haul our, you know, blend tech around and we would make them for crowds. Sometimes 500 people would show up. We would make green smoothies and we would let everybody, let everybody try them. And from the beginning, from the first ones I did in California and Texas, it was standing room only. And what I got from that is that people want to eat right and they don't know how anymore. We've lost it. We're the first generation whose mothers and grandmothers ate out of a box. Yeah. Yeah. Robin, just real fast. Um, I'm going to edit this part out, but you're shifting to one side. So you're going to oh. be cut off. So try and keep And Sorry. I just don't want you to be cut off on the screen. So is this better? Yes, that's much better. So just try and try and stay about there. <laughs> Otherwise, people are going to see your window. Okay. All right. So um, great. We'll just take over from here. So what do you think were the biggest things that really helped you encourage other people? Like, obviously, your story is very motivational. So you started making doing these demonstrations. Was it all uh, live or did you start doing stuff online? What was next? Well, I was teaching little classes and people would ask me to come and speak to their church group or at a health food store or something here locally. And then I put greensmoothiegirl.com up and we immediately were getting hundreds of visitors a day. And I literally right out of the gate was spending four hours a day answering people's emails. And um, then I like hired someone and I would just respond to their questions. I was like, how can I help them flatten that learning curve? Because for me, I spent a year learning what to make, what my family would eat so that I could eat, feed my family mostly greens, vegetables, fruits, legumes, whole grains, nuts, and seeds away from processed meat, sugar, white flour. That's what Americans eat is processed white flour, white sugar, and meat. That's most of their diet. Average Americans getting one to two servings of vegetables and fruits a day. And it's not kale, collards, chard, spinach that we blend in our green smoothies. So um, I just... Started, I started listening to the feedback that my readers, when I put my website up, listen to their feedback and respond to what they wanted. 
And then I spent a full time year developing a course called 12 Steps to Whole Foods. And it was all the things that I found that made a difference for me. Because I made a lot of yucky recipes and I read a lot of books that were, you know, maybe had a nugget of truth, but a lot of garbage too. Um, and I was just digging to the bottom of every nutrition issue and controversy and trying to figure out what is a healthy diet. Mm-hmm. And I never have gone out there saying vegetarian is right, paleo is right. This, what I say is eat more whole foods in their most unprocessed form possible and eat lots of plants. If you want to eat only plants, fine, but the, I don't, I eat almost only plants at this point, but it's not a dogmatic thing. Like you can't be healthy if you eat any animals or animal products. It's, it's just kind of a personal preference at this point. But, um, I, really believe that we've got to get rid of the processed meat. Um, We've got to get rid of the pork. We've got to get rid of the the crappy gluten and hybridized grains, the white flour, the processed sugars. Those have to go if we want our health back. Yeah. There's no way around it. And people like to, people always come up to me after my life. I mean, I've met thousands of people on my lecture circuit. People always coming up to me and saying, um, saying, does this work for, and then they tell me a diagnosis and I say, Hey, I'm not a doctor and I'm not here to diagnose you or give you a prescription or tell you a specific diet for you. All I know is none of those autoimmune diseases and this epidemic of cancer and heart disease existed until the standard American diet existed. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's it's so true. And I'm so sorry that nobody talked to you about diet, that none of the doctors talked to you about that. And certainly I hope that that's changing. I, I do hear more doctors talking about the importance of nutrition, the importance of diet and lifestyle. But I think that that, that can improve still. Um, so, But I'm glad that you finally found the answers that you needed. That's fantastic. And that you've been such an inspiration for so many other people. If people are trying to figure out how to get away from processed foods and eat more plant-based foods, what are some of the first things that you think they can start doing to, to make that shift? Well, I'm a big fan of starting with the green smoothie just because I call it the highest and best use of your kitchen time because it's never been easier to be a, what I call a green smoothie girl. That's why I put the side up is people think I'm trying that I'm the green smoothie girl. I'm like, no, no, no. Everybody gets to be a green smoothie girl or green smoothie guy, but you have a blender and if you, all you have is like your Oster or whatever, $15 blender. You start there, but try to get yourself one of the, one of the bad boys because it is the most important thing in my kitchen. That three or $400 turbo blender will make you really nice green smoothies and it will last you for years and years and years. And it will be a, a key part of getting your health back. So a green smoothie is a great place to start because when you put lots and lots of greens in it, not, don't make a fruit smoothie that you throw a handful of spinach in. That might be a place to start, but the goal is lots of green, maximum amount of green. That's a great place to start because you get in a quart of green smoothie. The quart jar is the one that's about this big, not the one that's this big. Uh, people always ask me that. Um, 10 servings of raw greens and fruit. And if you imagine what that can do for you when the average American's getting one or two servings of vegetables and fruits, and most of those are French fries, ketchup, and juice. And my kids have to drink a pint of green smoothie they have for literally 20 something years now. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a, that's a very high impact habit. I also, in my 12 steps to whole foods course, I think the most, this, the, the next most necessary step is my step eight. I teach people how to eat cold, how to make and eat cultured foods. I think everybody's got a gut disease at this point. Yeah. Yeah. And that's good. So probiotic rich foods, fermented foods, um, fermented, uh, for the vegetables or, okay. And, and the, okay. So let's talk about the smoothie. So you mentioned the kind of blender. So you want to hopefully a high power blender, but really any blender will do. And so then what do you put in it? What's the base? What do you, how many veg servings of vegetables, how many cups, Can you give us an idea? So a quart is four cups, and I've measured it. According to USRDA serving sizes, you're getting about 10 servings of raw greens and fruit. You're not cooking anything, so all those enzymes remain intact. You're getting very high nutrient density because the calories are low and the vitamins, minerals, enzymes are so high. And so, but I like to add, I make my own, Green Smoothie Girl makes its own 
Um, we have a vegan, organic, raw protein. So it's made literally from vegetables and legumes in their whole state. We don't use isolates and everything is organic. So I put a scoop of that in because, because I don't eat a lot of meat and even the paleo people, I'm sorry, but you know, paleolithic man did not eat those kinds of meats. And, um, you know, they ate woolly mammoth and all the plants they ate were, were, are extinct now. And so, and so people say they're paleo and all I eat free range and I eat, I eat, um, you know, organic and wild caught. Well, not if you eat in restaurants, you don't. Um, and most of the people who are eating paleo and buy wild caught, free range, all that are people who have, who have discretionary income and they eat out a lot and they travel a lot and there's almost no restaurant. It's one in a hundred where you can even order that kind of. So to me, whether you're vegetarian or not, you ought to be able to eat a plant-based meal because it's a better option in a lot of restaurants because you can buy the wild caught fish at home, but you're not likely to get it in 99% of restaurants. So look for plants, look for legumes, beans, lentils, split peas, chickpeas, look for those, look for grains. I'm probably not answering your question very well, but <laughs> I, I put lots of greens in my green smoothie. I put a scoop of vegan protein. I keep the fruit to a minimum. I use fruit that's in season, or but I really try to keep any thin skinned fruit and any green organic. It's worth the money and organics have gotten so much cheaper. I'm starting to say that this is the perfect time to be a green smoothie girl or guy because when I started doing this, we didn't have triple washed organic greens that you can get at Costco. They're everywhere. Mm -hmm. They're everywhere. It, yeah. we, had to, we had to actually wash our greens back in the day. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, and then for liquid in your smoothies, do you put water or um, coconut milk, almond milk? What do you, what do you use? Yeah, good. Sorry, good question. So I always start with water, but I also, um, in one of my smoothies, I will ferment or I will use water kefir grains in coconut water. And that gives you, especially because I'm a competitive athlete, I play sports two to three hours every day. Um, I will put that as the base of a smoothie every day. And that way, while I'm doing the same step, the same 10 minutes I spend making a smoothie, I'm also getting those cultured foods that replace, you know, that, that, that keep a healthy gastrointestinal system and good healthy flora. And I know that you teach this and that has everything to do with your healthy skin, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So, so if people can't start there, they can start with water as a good base. I mean, that's simple. Yeah. It's easy filtered water and then adding in four, did you say four cups? Well, I just add green. So mine's about one third water. I mean, I have whole books of recipes. Sure, sure. One third water. I add greens and blend it until it's another third full and then fruit to be the final third. I see. Okay. Okay. So great. it's about one to one to one in terms of where it lands in the blender. So if you have an eight <laughs> cup blender jar, maybe like two and a half cups of water you start with, blend greens till you're at about five cups. Blend fruit till you're at about seven and a half cups. And now you've got two quarts for you and your spouse or whatever. And and you drink that throughout the day or is that just morning? <laughs> you know, I don't, I usually drink it for lunch and sometimes for dinner too. Sometimes these days, you know, I'm not raising four kids anymore. Three of them are grown and I travel a lot. Sometimes I have a quart of green smoothie for lunch and dinner. And it's not, it's not a, people are just like, is it a re meal replacement? Well, it, I guess it could be, especially if you have a scoop of protein in it. And we also make a sprouted broccoli chia flaxseed. And so it's dehydrated. And so we put a scoop of that in to get your omegas. The more nutrition you can get out of that one step, the better. But um, I often, just because I'm always eating while I work and I, you know, I own three companies and, and I work like 60 hours a week. So food prep is a big issue for me. I will um, often drink a quart of green smoothie plus whatever else I'm eating for lunch and for dinner. But I always tell people just drink it whenever you want. Yeah. If you like it for breakfast, have it for breakfast. Um, just get it, get it done. And it bumps out other things that are generally less nutrient dense. You know, some people mm -hmm. find them, you know, if you drink a quart of green smoothie, there's something else that you were going to eat that day that gets bumped out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. So now you still do talks, right? You still speak from the stage. 
Yeah, I iced the Green Smoothie Girl show um, to put on the Breakthroughs live tour, and that's how I met you. Um, lots of people are like, you have to know Dr. Trevor Cates because she's this gorgeous um, doctor who um, has, has a, quite an audience and quite a following, and you have your own breakthrough story that is unique. And so we are, so my third company, Breakthroughs Live, is taking 40 really insp inspirational thought leaders in, into 40 cities this year to share their message and help people achieve health and happiness breakthroughs. That's great. What are, who are some of the, the 40? Tell, tell us, talk about those. Oh gosh, so many amazing people. There's probably at least 15 doctors. Um, we have Dr. Josh Axe. We have um, Dr. Joe Mercola. We have Erin Elizabeth, the Health Nut News. We have JJ Virgin, a four time New York Times bestselling author. Dr. Kellyanne Petrucci, author of The Bone Broth Diet. We have Dr. Alan Christensen in Arizona. Overcame, you know, he's, he's this amazing doctor who had cerebral palsy when he was a kid. Um, Brian Clement, who runs the Hippocrates Institute in Florida, which is one of my favorite places on the whole planet. Um, lots of lots of influencers from from personal growth as well. Para Bristow, who invented the singing zone, he has over a million people who who follow him, learning how to use your voice. Uh, Kathy Smith, who if you're old enough, if you're over forty, everybody knows Kathy Smith because she. I mean, I know you're. She's your personal friend. But she, you know, we all raised our kids doing aerobics on the TV to Kathy Smith. So, so many. I don't even, my brain is bursting with how many <laughs> amazing people are on our tour. I uh, you know. I'm thrilled and honored to be a part of the, the Breakthroughs Tour. I'm, I'm super excited about that. And a lot of the people that you mentioned, I would say most of the people you mentioned, I've either had on my podcast or my summit. So people, my audience is very familiar with a lot of these people. And um, so it's fantastic. So tell us about how the tour works. How the tour works is you go to breakthroughslive.com when we launch on January 26th and you just um, put your email address in to, to be able to watch our Health and Happiness Breakthroughs short film. And it's your story and it's my story and it's eight of the other influencer stories in, in a very short film that gives you a taste of what we're bringing to the live stage. So you go watch that film for free and then you have $50 off to give your followers and they can get a, a ticket in any of the 50 cities and bring their friends for girls night out, bring your spouse for date night and come for some fantastic breakthrough ideas that are truly life changing and um, enjoy getting to meet some of these um, New York Times bestselling authors in person. We'll have breaks where you get to go chat with them, get their autograph if you want. <laughs> okay, great. And I know that there's so much information online and like we're doing these podcasts, we do these summits online and that's fantastic. And you have a lot of information that you share on your, on your website, but it's also nice to be in person. I mean, I still have to can, go to conferences to maintain my medical license, but I enjoy going to them because I get to see people and, and actually spend time with them. And, and it's, it, there's something about being in person, right? Yeah. And and it's not just like for the audience; it's different. They're they're watching you, and it's like, oh, look, there's Dr. Cates in her in her office, and we feel we feel more of a connection to you than we do when we are, you know, reading your newsletter because we get to see your your pretty face and see your space behind you. But there's something about a live event, and it's really, really magical for the people who attend. But what they should know is it's magical for you and me too, because we get to meet the people whose lives have been affected by our body of work and I love it. I do last, last year I spoke in 88 cities and I loved mm -hmm. every minute of it. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I hope I never lose touch with that because I love being one-on-one -on -one with people and enjoying that. That's you know, why I see patients in my clinic because I get to get to help them and be one-on-one -on -one with people. So I think that I'm excited to do that too. That's, that's going to be great. All right. Well, Robin, is there, are there any last little bits of um, like tips or to get started with a healthy diet? Any of those um, little tips that you could share with people as a last little Less a little bit of information. Yeah, I want to say that my journey was really two steps forward, one step back. So 
hear my story and you say, well, that doesn't apply to me. I'm too far gone. I'm a hundred pounds overweight or I have fill in the blank, your diagnosis. I'm talking to you. I'm not talking to everybody but you and you are too far gone and you're too old. It, you're going to have an entire different liver in your body. 90 days from now, you will replace every single cell of that liver and your liver serves you in over 500 ways. So you have, you can have massive impact on your health in a short period of time. And I really believe that even though, you know, I used to eat a bag of, um, York peppermint patties every other day. And I used to eat a box of six chocolate frosting covered chocolate donuts every other day. I'm there. I'll tell you, I have had my backslides. I have had times when I eat too much and I eat the wrong things, but it's two steps forward, one step back. And when you look at the trajectory of it, it still has gone like this. And so I just want to encourage people that even if you've made a mistake, don't pound on yourself. Don't be unkind to yourself. Encourage yourself on a, on a path of taking a step at a time. I love the green smoothie as a first step because people start to see an upswing in their energy. They start to see pounds fall off, even though they're not on a diet and they're not depriving themselves. They just start losing weight. Um, take a step like that and then make it your goal that when you have that one mastered, you take another whole food step. And before you know it, you can be living this radically high vibration life that you never dreamed possible. Absolutely. All right. Well, that's that's amazing. Inspirational words for, for really all of us because we all have those weak moments when we feel like, oh, I've messed up. Oh, that means I'm just going to make some more bad choices. So it's it's important to remember that we you know, just keep moving forward. You might mess up, but just keep going forward with wherever you are in life, right? Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, thanks so much for your inter interview today, Robin. I really appreciate it. I loved doing it and have a wonderful weekend, Dr. Trevor. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this interview today with Robin Openshaw, the Green Smoothie Girl. To learn more about Robin and the Breakthroughs Tour, visit my website, thespadoctor.com. Go to the podcast page with their interview, and you'll see all the information and links there. And I hope you'll join me for the Breakthroughs Tour. Also, I invite you to join the Spa Doctor community on my website or subscribe to the podcast on iTunes so you don't miss any of our upcoming shows. And if you haven't done so already, I highly recommend that you get your customized skin profile at theskinquiz.com. It's free based upon your answers. It'll give you great tips for glowing skin and vibrant health. Just go to theskinquiz.com. Also, don't miss out on the latest tips to get glowing skin on the inside and out and vibrant health. Follow me on Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter, Instagram, and join the conversation. Thank you, and I'll see you next time. 